years ago, every second person in Pakistan. Got your Bibles? They're, they're healed. Do you want to preach? Hallelujah. This is my Bible. I am who it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I can have what it says I can have. Today, I will be taught the incorruptible word of God, and I will understand it, and it will not be stolen from me. In Jesus' name, amen. In Luke chapter 21, verse 28, Luke 21, 28, it says this, and when these things began to take place, man, there were things in this world that began to take place. It says, straighten up and lift up your head. Another version says, look up, look up. The only way you're going to restore your soul, your thinking, and not be talking about what's happening in this world is turn it around and begin to look up. You know what? The way you look up is, is re, re, realizing what Jesus Christ has done for you. Let me, let, me, let me put it in the natural realm for you. Let me put it in the natural realm for you. Those of you, how many when you were young kids used to lay on the grass, look up and see the clouds? Yeah. Let me ask you this. When you laid on the ground and you looked up and you seen different clouds and you were going, you know, you're, if you're with anybody laying on the grass, they'd say, oh, look at there. There's kind of like an elephant. And that. Let me ask you this question. When you're laying on the grass, looking up, did you have fear? Did you have anxiety? See, isn't that interesting? So even in the natural, we can literally do something that can bring us peace. And that might be taking a walk. And if nothing else, maybe laying on the grass in the park and looking up and realizing what Christ has done for us. And, and, and one thing about going into the park or going into a place where there isn't people is this, is that it's peaceful. And when it's peaceful, you'll get peace. Amen? Have you ever noticed that when, when that happens, all things that, that were bugging you or bombarding you, all of a sudden they didn't seem so important. Amen? All right. We're about to partake, and we'll do this at the end of the service of the Lord's Supper. Let's partake with faith and expectancy. You know, we need to begin to expect that what the Lord says in His Word, it will work for us. Amen? Let's, let's begin to expect expect our miracle. We talked about that today. We sang about it today. We talked about our miracle uh, taking place and uh, talking about expecting. The, when I go back and we'll go through it, the, the Israelites at Passover were expecting something to happen that night. They had no idea of how many things God was going to do for them. But one of the things that they thought was they were going to be released, be able to go out into the wilderness, because that was their request, and to sacrifice. But they came out, and they came out of Egypt without one feeble, right? I loved how, and I said this last, last service, and I'll say it again, in Exodus chapter 12, verse 11, I love this. Exodus 12, verse 11, now... Now you shall go, now you shall eat it in this manner. With your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it in haste. It's the Lord's Passover. Why did God want them to eat this Passover with belts on their waist, the staff in their hand, the sandals on their feet? Because God's telling them, get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Be ready. Today I'm telling you, God's here telling you, get ready. Be ready. 
there's going to be a miracle that's going to take place in your life. You know what? I'm talking about this morning, not just the Passover. This is so interesting because the Passover isn't just about you getting healed. You may need healing today, but it isn't just about healing. They got their freedom. You might be bound up in fear. You might be bound up in something. You might be, you, you have no idea. I mean, freedom, he may tell you to take a step in this direction, and bam, the doors open up. Communion means more than just taking and partaking and believing God for your healing. So, so much more. They were expecting they were ready for their physical deliverance. They were ready for their completeness, whole completeness. That means all of a sudden, somebody wants you for a job. Wow, I just got completed, right? They were expecting. I believe this is going to happen in our church for each and every one of you. You might, we might not be at a place where everyone here, we're not, we might not be at that place where everyone here, there is no feeble. We might not be at that place. But guess what? The more and more we talk about communion, the more we partake of communion, the more you expect, the more you expect all of a sudden you receive it because you begin to believe that it's for you. Amen? Amen? Amen. Even if you've had a medical condition or pain in your body, partaking of the Lord's Passover communion by faith, giving thanks that you've already been healed. Because the, the reason I say that, because over 2,000 years ago, Christ died on the cross so that we can be healed. Nothing broken, nothing missing. I believe every time we partake of the Lord's Supper, I believe this to be without a shadow of a doubt that we get healthier and healthier, stronger and stronger. Amen. Standing in what we believe, the Word of God says. If you're, thinking, if you're thinking to yourself, Pastor, I've tried communion, I've partaken of communion so many times before, and it just did not work for me. I have a word for you. As you partake today by faith, expect to see the full manifestation of your wholeness in your life. I'm not just talking about health and wholeness. I'm talking about everything that needs healing in your wholeness. It may be a family member. It may be wholeness in your, in your work. It may be wholeness in, in your house. Whole, it, it, it's wholeness in every area. Amen? But it, begin to expect to see the full manifestation. Amen? There's a, an enemy who wants to keep you enslaved to the medical condition in your life. Listen to me. Trying to convince you that you have to live with your condition for the rest of your life. The enemy wants to keep you in a place of despair, keep you so focused on your disappointments that you cannot lay hold of God's promises for you. There's people like that. Maybe it's somebody watching. There is people like that. They cannot even take hold of God's promises because the enemy is so bombarded them and they're so focused on, their, on what's happening to them that they can't stand on the word of God. See, this is what he did for the, Isra the children of Israel. When Moses told the Israelites that God would rescue them from their bondage, bondage, what, maybe it's somebody watching, what are you in bondage to? What is attacking you? What, what is holding you in your bondage? What is not allowing you to go freely and do what you need to do? The Bible tells us that these Israelites actually got to a place where they actually refused to listen 
See, that's the issue. You don't know what I am going through. You don't know what I'm feeling. You don't know. And they refuse to listen to what you have to say. Really? Exodus 6, 9. Moses told the people of Israel what the Lord had said. I'm telling you today, this is what the Lord is saying. As you partake of communion today, you can receive your wholeness and the bondage can be gone. This, Moses told the people of Israel what the Lord had said, but they refused to listen anymore. Isn't that interesting? They had become too discouraged by the brutality of their slavery. Wow. I know you all know the story, but I'm, I'm putting a spin on it here. God did not abandon them even though they refused to listen. God is not abandoning you. Even though, listen to me. He knew that they were in a state of despair because they suffered under the yoke of slavery for so long. God, God has not abandoned you even though you may have suffered, whoever's watching or whoever may be here for a long time. Do you know what the children of Israel did that caused God to rescue them so mightily? This is interesting. It applies for us today. Because the Bible doesn't change. It says it's the same yesterday, today, and forever. That's Jesus Christ. That's the Word of God. It says that we're actually sons and daughters of Abraham, right? In Galatians chapter 3, verse 29, it says that we are sons and daughters of Abraham. Now that you belong to Christ. How many here belong to Christ? Okay, there's four hands that didn't go up. I'm going <laughs> to... Now you that belong to Christ, you are not the true children of Abraham. Amen? Can I get an amen? amen. No, it doesn't say that. It says that you are the true children of Abraham. You are, not are not. You are the children of Abraham. You're his heirs and God's promise to Abraham belongs to who? Belongs to me. Amen? Do you believe that his promises to Abraham belong to you? Yes? Okay, then remember this because we're going to Exodus chapter 2, verse 23 and 24. Years passed and the king of Egypt died. But the Israelites continued to, to what? Groan. Groan. Under the burden of slavery, they cried out to God, and their cry rose up to God. Next verse. God heard their crying. Is that what it says? What? This is interesting. God heard their groaning and he remembered his covenant promise to Abraham. Are we the children of Abraham? Yes. He remembered his covenant that he made, that Abraham took by faith. That's the same as us. We take it by faith. And because of that, he remembers his covenant that he made to Abraham applies to you and me here today. As we are going to partake of this, that same promise to release us, to make us whole, whatever's binding, whatever's got us in bondage. But pastor, you don't know it for years and years. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That slavery was for years and years and years. They got to a place that they didn't, they didn't want to hear Moses. I didn't want to hear God. God, I don't want to hear what... 
I, I've got a way out. I've got a way out. Ah, God, I don't even want it. Pastor, I don't want to hear what God, I don't want it. I've been dealing with this for years. He's got a way out. He's got a way out. Come on. The children of Israel were so oppressed that they, all they could do was groan. There was nothing left for them to be able to compose any kind of prayer. The Bible tells us that God heard their groaning, but the most important thing is that he remembered his covenant with Abraham. I want you to see this because I want you to know you do not have to have impressive declarations of prayer, of faith. They're good. It's, I'm a teacher of it. Declare by faith what you're believing God for. But it's interesting because these guys weren't there. And yet God delivered them. Isn't that interesting? And yet, word of faith says if you do not proclaim and you do not say the right things, you won't get the right things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me say, these guys got delivered and they were expecting that night something special. And they were groaning. Amazing. They, they didn't even have amazing prayers anymore. It said that. To do anything that impressed God. You don't have to have impressive prayers to impress God. Guess what? You can't impress God. Oh, thou Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. You know what? There's nothing we can do to impress Him because He set it into motion and said, Now I have children of Abraham and the promises that I promised to Abraham, now I promise them to you. I have the answer. My son did it all for you. And you that are watching. I don't care how long, what you're dealing with, this can change your life today. But you got to begin to expect it. Even a groan reached the throne room of God. Even a sigh from you will reach the throne room of Abba, Father, our Father. Maybe that condition, those of you that are watching or somebody here, that condition in your body has shackled you for so long that you're told yourself to stop hoping. Because if you don't, because if you don't, you, you won't get your hopes up. And, 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 and if it, at, least, at least that way, if it, nothing happens, you won't be disappointed. Come on, I know there's people there. Lying devil. Maybe you cannot help but fear as you are confronted with the size of a tumor or the level of your platelet count or, or whatever's happening in your body. Maybe you simply stop praying. There's people that have done that. This whole time, there's people that have stopped praying. There's st people that have stopped going to churches. I, I, I feel, I feel I've, my heart so breaks that there's so many people not getting taught the Word of God. And, and, uh, and my heart really breaks that they can't hear the Word. You know, there's so much on the Internet but let me tell you, I am so selective because all of a sudden everybody became a t TV evangelist. And I am very selective in who I listen to and what I listen to because I want to keep that faith built up in me. You know what? When somebody, somebody goes on, they said, you know what? We're so close to the return of Jesus Christ. I shut them off. That is good. That does not build my faith up one iota. It doesn't. I'm sorry to say. 
I want to listen to people that are going, you will get through this no matter what. Just stand on the, on the, on the promises of God. Just stand on and take communion. You know, you know, people like that, they're going, I can listen to that. My faith gets built up. But boy, start listening to, oh, pastor's getting on, and you know what? This is a new norm, and this is the, 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 the. I, I, just, I just hit the, the two-bar thing. <laughs> I'm not listening to that. If you listen to it, what happens is you get fear. You don't get any faith built up. When you get anxiety and, oh my God, what if, what if the rapture's coming like within a week? I don't know if my kids and I don't know. Blah, 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 I don't know. See, there's no peace there. You need to you be very selective. There's people that have stopped praying, simply stopped hoping. You may have stopped believing what the Word says. You may have stopped to a place where you don't believe that the Word, sure, it works for Edwin, but it doesn't work for me. Uh huh. You ever heard that? Sure, it works for Sveta. She's a praying woman, but it don't work for me. No, no, no. See, if any of the things that I've said sound familiar, let me tell you, today, fight, fight for all you're worth to give the Lord another chance to bring the Word of God to become a revelation to go. Whoa, I never seen it like that before. Wow, it's for me. Whoa, this is so awesome. When God told the Israelites to keep the first Passover, he said in Exodus 12, verse 2, this is you today. This is you today. You know, I've, I found it so interesting. The, word, the more, the closer we're getting to the return of Jesus Christ, the more the Bible is relevant to today. I am like, wow, it, it is, 10 years ago, you know, neglect not the assembling of yourselves. Da, 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 da. Now it's like, hey guys, listen. The word is alive. This month shall be the beginning of months for you. It is the first month of the year to you. This speaks when they did communion. This speaks of a new beginning. Think about this. They had lived a life of no hope. Brutality. Whippings. Got to a place that they didn't even want to listen to God anymore. Have you been under, under such pressure that you get to a place that you don't want to listen to the Word of God anymore? I... I I, I'm preaching to the choir here because you're all here. Those of you out at home, no. <laughs> Anyone that's watching, listen, they had no, no new look, no beginning, but God says, this is a new beginning for you. He's saying to you today, remember this, this is a new beginning for you today as you partake of communion. Perhaps you never had a revelation of how much Jesus actually suffered. And I, and I went through that last week. Perhaps you never heard how, it didn't have a revelation of knowing how much power was in the res resurrection of Jesus Christ. How much power was there? Man, there was so much power. There wasn't a devil in hell that could contain him and hold him down there. That devil was defeated. I'm praying that as we take communion today, that your eyes, eye gates, your ear gates are open to hear the revelation of the Word of God. In Ephesians chapter 1, this is Paul. He prayed for the church, and, and this is such a prayer for you. I pray that the light of God will illuminate the eyes of your imagination, flooding you with the light of until you experience the full revelation of the hope of his calling. There's a hope. There's a new beginning as you take part, as we're going to partake of communion. 
That is the wealth of God's glorious inheritance that he finds in us. He finds something very precious in you. You're very precious to him. He wants you healthy. He wants you whole. He wants nothing to be broken in your life. He not, wants nothing to be missing in your life. Next verse. I pray that you will continually experience the immeasurable greatness of God's power made available through, to you through faith. So no matter how long you've done communion, no matter how many times you've tried something, I'm telling you today, let's begin to expect, no matter what you're feeling, no matter what you're going through, no matter what, let this be a new beginning for you today. Amen? Then your lives will be an advertisement of the immense power as it works through you. That's what Pastor Sveta said. Yes. That power isn't for you. I mean, it is for you. Yeah. But it's for you to work through you towards other people. Yeah. Amen? So you see other people get healed. So you other, see other people get made whole. So that you can go and say, can I pray for you? You know, it's so interesting. I, I led somebody to the Lord. I haven't been doing that for a while. I need to get back into that. How many people... It's like nobody went out of their houses, so nobody was leading anybody to the Lord. But let me... I led this guy to the Lord, and I'm praying for him. And I said, uh, welcome to the family of God. And he goes... Man, that changed my life. He hugs me. Hallelujah. Up until that point in time, it was a distance. But once he came into the family of God, he got a revelation that blood of Jesus saved him. Amen? Amen. Where am I? Am I at the next verse? I got to put my glasses on to read that one. This is the mighty power that was released when God raised Christ from the dead. There is an amazing power that when God raised Christ from the dead and exalted him to the place of highest honor, supreme authority in heaven, in heavenly realm. Then in Matthew it says, I have received all power, all authority, now you. Now you, go in the name of Jesus. Go and proclaim it. Amen? Today I want to encourage you as you take a step of faith. Let this day be a new beginning of new days. You need to do this every day. Maybe, maybe two or three times a day you need to do it. If you're, if you're needing something to be changed. I got, I got one more message on it on this communion. I'm going to give you a, a message of a young lad that was diagnosed with a serious, serious, serious situation and illness. And I'll give you that testimony of how his mom and dad heard the message about communion and started doing it three times a day. I'll give you the, I'll give you the results. When you put your trust in the Lamb who was slain for you, you're stepping into a new beginning. I encourage you to forget the former things, the failures in your past, the things that didn't work in your past. Forget about it, all the disappointments that you had in your past. Forget about them. Forget about them. The same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead, it dwells on the inside of you. But pastor, I don't feel it. I don't see it. You will feel it and you will see it the moment you walk up to somebody that is not saved and you start giving a testimony or you start telling them about Jesus Christ. 
all of a sudden there's scripture that comes out of you and you go, oh my God, where'd that come from? I didn't memorize that scripture. See, that's the Holy Spirit and just goes, Choo! and now it comes out of your mouth. I'm inviting you once again to start putting your faith in the one who gave his life for you. We're going to take the bread right now. If you do not have your communion cup, grab one. We got, they got 14 boxes of 14,100 boxes. I bought three of them. The very top, the little fil film, the very, very filmy thing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They asked me uh, when I went to get the communion, they said, are you, okay, are you okay with 300? I said, I ordered 500. And they said, oh. They didn't come in. Only hundreds came in. I says, when the 500 comes in, phone me. It will come in. You know, I couldn't figure out. All the churches are closed, right? I mean, not now in Alberta. But across Canada, all churches are closed, right? All churches in the States were closed, right? Why was there no communion cups? Because nobody was taking them unless the factory got shut down. As we take this bread, I want you to say this. Thank you, Jesus. You gave your body to be broken so mine could be made whole by your stripes that fell on your back and on your body. I see my body healed from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. Not because of anything that I did, but because of the covenant you provided for me I accept my healing, my wholeness, no matter what in my life. It, today's a new beginning. It's a day of restoration. And I expect it. I receive it. In Jesus' name, amen. As you take the cup in your hand, hallelujah. Say this, Lord Jesus, thank you for your precious blood that washed me clean from every sin. Today, I partake of every inheritance that belongs to me, even righteousness, that this blood also includes protection, healing, wholeness, provision, provision, nothing broken, nothing missing. In Jesus' name, amen. Today I trust, you don't have to say it, today I trust that you will experience what the Israelites received on that night, their wholeness. Not only were they delivered, there was not one feeble amongst them. And I said that last week, that there was people that probably had sore muscles and aches and pains and and probably had stripes off their backs from the whippings. But that night was changed, totally healed, nothing broken, nothing missing. Man, they even got provision that night. 
millionaires overnight. Are you expecting to be a millionaire? See, they receive their wholeness after partaking of applying the blood, which we did, and eating the roasted lamb. I'm believing for your breakthrough with you today, even those of you that are watching. Because I know this, without a shadow of a doubt in my heart, that the Lord Jesus Christ wants you set free. He wants you set free in Jesus' name. You guys are a blessing. I love you. We love you. Father, I thank you for each and every person here and those that are watching online. I thank you, Father God, for good things to happen. This week, because of communion today, this week, they're going to notice changes in their bodies. They're going to notice, notice a difference in finances. Notice a difference in wholeness. Notice a difference because they're expecting. And Father, I give you praise. I give you glory for it. I thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen, 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 amen. You're welcome. Welcome to stay for a coffee afterwards. We have amazing coffee. They have specials on. Enjoy this week. Amen. What? What?